So here we go. The last part that I want to go through is the actual um, phases of the menstrual cycle. Yes. All right. And so this is what I want to go over with you. So we're going to talk right now about the average 28-day menstrual cycle. But you need to realize that not everyone is average and that some people have 24 to 26 day menstrual cycles. Sorry for you. Some people have none. None. Some people have to brag about it. And then some people. <laughs> and then. And then. Uh, and then some people have prolonged, like 36 day cycles or something like that. So. But 28 days on average is what she wants. 28 days. So this is what we're gonna. <laughs> It's like a coincidence that like rehab is 28 days too. You know, it's just, I'm just okay. wondering if there was an ow. All right. So, um, so you need to know. So you need to know that the menstrual cycle is um, divided into three phases. All right. All right, Lachelle. That's how she sit down. All right. So the first phase is called the menstrual phase. All right, and that's actually the first four to five days, and that's where there's sloughing off of the endometrium. Okay, that's honestly the bleeding part of it. Okay, and the first day of the menstrual flow is considered day one of the menstrual cycle. All right. Ovulation is the part of the female reproductive cycle that occurs when the egg is released from the ovary. All right. Now, phase two is called the proliferative phase. Okay. Proliferative phase is phase two. And you're the one I hate when I'm like listening to those. This when I get home, I can't hear what Shay's saying because there's all this like <laughs> talking. Ovulation but what? that's what she down knows. Occurs when the egg is released. Yeah, ovulation is the part of the female reproductive cycle that occurs when the egg is released from the ovary, and that's usually around day 14. Okay. All right, proliferative phase. This phase begins after the menstrual flow ends and lasts until ovulation. So that's going to be from day 5 till day 14. All right? <clears throat> Proliferative means that that's where the follicles mature and the uterine lining thickens up or proliferates. All right? and the estrogen secretion increases to its highest level. Estrogen is at its highest level during the proliferation phase. Say it again because you'll probably see that on a test. Estrogen is at its highest level during the proliferative phase. Okay? So, 28 day menstrual menstrual cycle first phase is the menses and it's day one to day five okay proliferative phase is day five to day 14 and that if that is where the estrogen secretion is at its highest then the third phase is the secretory phase it's called secretory because it secretes okay the secretory phase begins at ovulation and lasts until the next menses begins. So that's day 14 to day 28. All right? And so it lasts until the next cycle begins. begins. Mm -hmm. So the ovary actually, and it's actually the corpus luteum, secretes its highest level of progesterone in the secretory phase. Okay, and the corpus luteum functions as an endocrine gland during the secretory phase. Repeat that again. Okay, the corpus luteum actually functions as an endocrine gland during the secretory phase. Okay, and it's during the secretory phase that uh, progesterone is at its highest level. Okay, so I'm going to say this again just so that you know. 
typical menstrual cycle lasts how many days? 28, 28 days. The menses phase? So day one to day four. Day one to day five, and what's five. going on? The sloughing of the endometrium. Sloughing of the endometrium accompanied by bleeding. Boom. We got that. Okay. Then we have um, proliferative phase, which begins from day five and goes to day 14. And what's going on in the proliferative phase? You're ready to get pregnant. That's the, where the estrogen is at its increases highest level. to its highest level. The estrogen is at its highest level, and the lining of the uterus is wow. thickening here. Okay? All right. And then tell me what ovulation is. It occurs when the egg really. is released from the ovary. The egg is released. And you guys realize that you can get pregnant two to three days before ovulation, two to three days after ovulation. So if there's any sperm in your system before you ovulate, it can meet the um, egg anywhere along the way. Two to three days <laughs> afterwards, it's any way along the way. Okay, so just beware. Buyer beware. Okay. All right. Um, then you have the third phase, which is the secretory phase. What's happening in that phase? It's secreting. It's secreting. And what is secreting? Progesterone. The highest level of progesterone. Okay. So that's what's being secreted, but it's oh, the corpus, corpus luteum, luteum that's, that's actually, actually secreting, secreting the, the progesterone. progesterone. You got it. All right. So there's three things that I want you to know here. Uh, FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, stimulates the development of the egg follicle in the ovary, and it stimulates spermatogonia to undergo cell division. So FSH isn't just important in females, it's also important in males as well. And so when they talk about people not being able to get pregnant, and they talk about a woman going to an endocrinologist to see if she's capable of getting pregnant. And then they say, has the male been tested? It's not just counting the number of swimmers that he has. It's also counting to see if he's producing enough FSH to actually cause the division uh, or the cell division so that he can produce enough. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Do they just take a sample of ejaculation? Huh? They have me ejaculate yep. and take a sample. Yep. Yes, they do. Um, and then uh, LH is a luteinizing hormone. Corpus luteum, luteinizing hormone. I'm just trying to say those things so that you know what, what to connect it to. So the luteinizing hormone is important for the development of the corpus luteum, luteinizing, luteum, all right? and it's known as the ovulation hormone, okay? All right, and then you know that the anterior pituitary gland produces the LH and the FSH, right? But it is also the tor target organ for the gonadotropin-releasing hormone. So you have the, what basically what you do is you have a gonadotropin-releasing hormone that goes to the anterior pituitary gland. And then, so it's GNRH here, anterior pituitary gland, and then the LH and the FSH, okay? Yes, no, maybe so. So it's GNRH, gonadotropin, um, releasing hormone, okay? That goes to the anterior, to, anterior pituitary gland. Then that produces LH and FSH. And you got it. And that, my friends, is the reproductive system. Are you serious? Bada bing, bada boom, yeah. it is done. Bada bing, bada boom. Anything else that we need to know? Bro? Oh, then <laughs> your vocabulary. These, these, I have not put the um, answers to this, but this is the vocabulary that if I were you, I would be prepared to possibly be seen as. Um, as matching, as matching, okay? So, ductus deferens, epididymis, interstitial cells, seminiferous cells, testes, 
urethra, seminal vesicles, prostate gland, corpora cavernosa, corpus spongiosum, ovary, oviduct, fimbrae, the fimbrae are the finger-like projections that are on the, the tips of the fallopian tubes that as the ovary releases the egg, it releases the egg and those fimbrae scoop them up and scoop them into the fallopian tubes. All right, cervix, fundus, myometria, vagina, Bartholin's glands, lactiferous ducts, clitoris, spermatogenesis, primary spermatocyte, and sperm. And I think I went through every one of those with you guys today. Thank you. Are we good? Or well, the, the what? This man? Seminiferous cell on there too? Not yeah. in, yes, seminiferous cells, yep. Okay. Uh, yes. And the gonads. Gonads are not on here. Okay. Okay, you're welcome. And guys, if I were you, in that study guide, you have the student assignment, mm -hmm. which is like a practice test. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say, gosh gee whiz, that looks pretty pretty good to see Just if you know your that. stuff. That's, study it. that's a pretty good pretty good thing to study if I were you. Pretty darn good thing to study. If you, yeah, if you know that, I would say that you would be pretty darn close to being ready to, to busting out some good grades.